What's going on y'all? Random thoughts here. And today we're going to go over the Vault Associate Certification and how to pass that on the first try. Um, this is something I recently passed, um, so I'm going to break down the resources that I used into paid resources, free resources, uh, and then just general tips that I have about the exam itself. Um, so hopefully this helps. Let's just dive right into it. All right, so for some context, um, when I was working on HashCorp Vault, I was actually working on it for a project at work. Uh, so that kind of you know encouraged me to get the certificate. Um, so for whatever your reason might be, um, you know that's just something to keep in mind with given the the time frame of like how quickly I actually got the certificate. Um, I was able to work on it, you know, basically all day at work for some time, um, at least for a few weeks. So the first thing that I started with was the getting started with HashCorp Vault on Udemy. Um, so that's. Uh, something that I purchased uh, oftentimes Udemy has a uh, they have like discounts quite a few discounts um, so that's something to keep in mind there but I was able to understand HashCorp Vault um, fairly well uh, just from this course alone um, I went a step ahead I got the advanced course as well um, so I ended up purchasing this uh, and it was great you know just dived into some more of the depths of, of HashCorp Vault um, you know particularly just on the uh, you know, the enterprise version uh, that they offer, which, you know, we had to use internally at my organization. Um, so that's, you know, that's that. Um, and then, I, you know, they actually released a book, which is kind of funny considering I was like, I just finished the advanced course. Um, and then I, I did end up purchasing the book. Um, you know, just one of those things just to have a reference uh, throughout the day. Um, and that's, that's one of the things that I used. Um, so that's the paid resources um, for, that I used. And then so for moving on to the free resources, um, one of the main free resources, free resources that I used was Ned in the Cloud. Um, I actually, <laughs> in the morning when I was getting ready uh, for work, I would actually listen to this, uh, you know, just kind of like having something in the background because um, that's kind of how I like also prepare for some of these certificates. I'll like have a book, I'll have a video. I'll just kind of like immerse myself into uh, trying to learn it. Uh, and then, you know, maybe even listening to it, like when I'm walking around or I'm doing the dishes or something like that. Um, so this was super useful, uh, extremely, extremely useful. Just like going over, um, you know, some of the things I might have overlooked in these these courses and these books. Um, I ended up kind of, re you know, hearing again and like acting almost as a refresher uh, when I was listening to this, uh, these video, video clips. Um, so super helpful, absolutely amazing free resource. Um, and then moving on, uh, of course, like downloading Vault on your local machine. Uh, so for me, it was Mac OS, uh, you know, just really, truly understanding uh, the commands. I mean, that's like one of the biggest takeaways that I have for this this particular exam is really understand the CLI with the vault because they want you using the CLI. Of course, there's like aspects, there's like a small portion of understanding the UI. So that's something to keep in mind as well. Um, and when I initially started with vault, I was actually primarily using the UI <laughs> uh, and I, I actually wasn't using the CLI. So I had to like go back and kind of, you know, really, you know, just kind of do an in-depth review of the CLI again. Um, so that was like hugely to my disadvantage. So if you're using Vault, I guess my advice is to try to use the CLI if you're going to take the HashCorp Vault exam. Um, something just to keep in mind there. Uh, but yeah, I would download it locally, um, install it, and then yeah, just, just run through it constantly. Like go through and understand the CLI, understand the chain of commands and, and everything else. Um, so that's, that's my advice on there. Uh, and then of course, you know, when you're the vault tutorials and the vault documentation is a big one as well I mean, this is kind of the more of the obvious stuff, but it's free. Of course, it's free <laughs> They want you to use this uh, and it's super super helpful um, go through the tutorials as well uh, And then, you know, just do it on your local machine, you know, understand all of the ins and outs on your local machine um, and then if you do that uh, even if you just use the free resources and if you go like all through the documentation multiple times and just like really understand the CLI, really understand, you know, the vault concepts of like why you're even using vault to begin with, um, which I was fortunate enough to understand because we had a work project for this um, and we weren't using secrets uh, and there's quite a few options out there. Um, so that's, you know, I just gravitated towards vault because uh, a lot of friends in the industry uh, were using this already, um, you know, and it was, it was just made sense. But yeah, that's uh, that's pretty much it for the free resources. If you just use these, um, you know, you're you're 
probably going to pass. Like if you just truly understand and go through the resources. Um, I, I just opted into the free uh, or the paid resources. Um, cause I, I just, I love Udemy as a platform. Um, I think they do some amazing, you, you can find some amazing things on here, I should say. Um, and I also like books, you know, just books are my thing. So, you know, if you don't like books, that's all good. <laughs> just use the documentation, maybe pair it with a video or something. Um, and then lastly, like getting even more advanced. Um, I just want to say like one of the things that I made a mistake on was focusing way too much on the vault like setup process in itself. So what I mean by that is um, just you know, really like my background, I was moving from Google Cloud to AWS. I wasn't hugely like familiar with AWS at the time. And I was tasked with, with putting Vault, well, well, sanding Vault up on my own. So that gives you any context. Like it was, it was, you know, a lot of work uh, to do, uh, especially for one person. Um, and, you know, with that, I spent an enormous amount of time trying to understand like all of the components of uh, AWS and I, in Packer as well. So this is the um, this is the uh, the repo that I used uh, to install this on AWS. Um, you know, and of course, like if you do this, you know, you can this you can use my fork. I'm actually going to spend some time and update the binaries in this. Um, but you know, HashiCorp was nice enough to create something like this, and it was there's a nice video on YouTube that it was I think it was like uh, you know using HashiCorp Vault in five minutes or something something to, the, to that effect. If you check my my YouTube, I have. Uh, a video called like HashiCorp Vault, the after party. And I kind of, you know, go in the depth as to, like how much work is actually involved with this because it looks, it looked super easy to begin with. I was just like, oh, sure, I can do this. And then, <laughs> you know, having, you know, not a really foundational understanding of AWS at the time, uh, as well as like not really understanding secrets at the time, it was a massive amount of work. I, I you know, just understand what you're getting yourself into prior to taking something like that on as well. But in any case, um, this repo is available. Uh, you know, just just use it. Understand that AWS will charge you. This is not free. Uh, this spins up a multi-node cluster uh, of HashiCorp Vault, um, so that's something to keep in mind. They will charge you. Uh, but if you have you know the resources to do this, by all means, go ahead and do it just to get a better understanding of like HashiCorp, you know, just in general and how you can go about uh, you know installing this yourself. Um, or opt into, you know, their managed service for HashiCorp Vault. I know HashiCorp's kind of moving towards that direction, you know, as, as are a lot of organizations, just because ma utilizing managed services is, is a lot easier in so many cases, especially like if you're in a small to medium sized company. Um, but yeah, that's, that's just kind of my thoughts on it. Um, if you have any questions, leave some in the comments below. Um, you know, if there's, there's concerns or if I like overlooked something or anything like that, but my overall advice would be, to very much not focus on the setup process because there's there are some questions around that more specifically around like you know what is what is highly available with HashiCorp Vault all that kind of thing but don't do what I did initially and spend like almost, like enormous amount of time on you know building it out in AWS or, or Google Cloud or you know whatever your your cloud might be but yeah that's it hope it helped. Um, if it didn't leave a comment as to why it didn't <laughs> and maybe I can improve on it. Um, but otherwise, uh, you know, take care.